Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, a fata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His tongue was released, and his he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. God is our liberator. In time past, and even today, God continues to be our liberator. Liberation is an act of God. No one can liberate us except God. And so it is an attribute of God. This is the attribute which the readings of today focus on. God frees all human beings from their sad condition of outcast. And he frees nature from its barren dryness. This man, the man that we talk about creation, what we have done to what God has created, we pray that he himself will restore creation for our use. You recognize that in the time past, around this time, you won't find the, the weather as cold as you find it today. These are realities we are facing, and we pray to God to intervene and liberate us, liberate our world and creation. Again, in this month too, on the 29th of September, it is the world day of death and dump. And so we call God to liberate us. And so our readings are talking about this situation, this human situation, we find ourselves. And he concludes that everything he, he has done is good. Again, he frees the Christian from any distinctions of class, for whether we are rich or poor, we are all the same in the sight of God. So he liberates us also from favoritism, partiality, and these are all human situations we find ourselves. The first reading presents the promise of God to the people of Israel who are in exile. The promise is to serve as a source of comfort for those who are of a fearful heart. Even though their situation is hopeless, Isaiah still presents another world in which dry barren lands have been turned into the most fertile lands. God is said to recreate, restore, and rejuvenate the world that once was utterly inhabitable due to war and imperial violence. As I have present before us the signs that will take place when the Messiah comes to establish the kingdom of God. The blind will see, the deaf shall hear, those who are lame will, joy, will jump for joy, with joy like the deer, and the mute shall sing for joy. Here, the Israelites in exiles are compared to, the, to those with physical impediments 
who are feeling helpless and feeble. Isaiah gives these helpless and hopeless people hope to overcome their challenges. In our gospel today, we read a narrative of Jesus curing a deaf man with a speech impediment, in which we see an allusion being made in the first reading healing, readings healing of physical infirmities associated with the coming of the Messiah. However, in the gospel, each of Jesus' action is symbolic. What is striking about the story is how the Lord performs this sign of healing. He took the deaf man aside. He wanted to be alone with him. Sometimes Christ wants to be alone with us. Let us make time when Christ wants to be alone with us. Because he took the man alone from the people. He wanted to encounter him in a different way. He puts his finger into the man's ears. Again, he touches his tongue with saliva. When I was growing up, we would set fire. You know, you come back from school and your food is there. You have to cook your own food. After eating, then you join your, your parents in the farm. And because you want to rush and cook, sometimes you put your hand in the fire and then you do this. We are told that when you do this, you put your hand in your tank, the saliva will suit the pain. And so that there is a saying that the saliva has some medicinal medicine built in it that suits one's pain. And so perhaps the saliva is also important here. And then Jesus looked up to heaven very symbolic. This sickness, it is only God who can heal it. And so I looked up to you. Then Jesus groaned. Jesus groaned. Showing empathy to the man who was suffering. And he said, Ephatha, be open. My dear friends, the process of healing Witness in the narrative looks a bit different from all the healing style of Jesus. Maybe it was because that person's condition had a particular symbolic value. The condition of the deafness is also a symbol that can say something to all of us. What is this about deafness? The man is, was unable to speak because he could not hear. To heal the cause of his infirmity, Jesus, in fact, placed his fingers first of all in the man's ears, then his mouth, but the ears first. Listen to this. We all have ears, but very often, we are not able to hear. We all have ears, but we are unable to hear. Sometimes people are talking to us and we are walking. So we don't hear. Sometimes our parents are talking to us and we are going. We don't hear. We have ears. Not that we have any impediment, but because of our situation, we don't hear. Sometimes our wives are talking to us and we are going. We don't hear. Our husbands are talking to us and we are on our way. We don't hear. And so sometimes there is a confusion because we don't hear. Not that we don't have the ears, but we have ears, but we don't hear. This is a sad situation we find ourselves these days. You see people, most of them, they have plugged their ears. 
You sit in a car and people have plugged their ears. They don't want to listen to anybody. We have ears, but we don't hear. It's a human situation, but we know. How does it feel to be heard? How does it feel to be heard? So it's it in that we don't have the ears, but the situation has, is such that we don't hear. What is this? My dear family, there is an interior deafness in all of us that we can ask Jesus to touch us and heal us. This interior deafness is worse than a physical deafness because this deafness is the deafness of the heart. We have so many things to say and do. We do not find time to stop and listen to those who speak to us. We run the risk of becoming impervious to everything and not making room for those who need to be heard. Let us ask ourselves these questions. How is my capacity to listen? Even within my own family setting, how is my capacity to listen? Do I let myself be touched by people's lives? Do I know how to spend time with those who are close to me in order to listen to them? St. Augustine once said, I fear Jesus will pass by me on notice because sometimes I don't listen. May God bless us. Amen. Let us now profess our faith together. I believe in God, 